Now, the belts that you should definitely stay away from. And those are... Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Paula and on this platform we discuss about designer fashion lifestyle, but in a more practical and sensible way. Today we're going to talk about designer belts. Which one are actually worth it in the year 2021? Which are not so much? Or are designer belts anyway worth the price? So let's just jump right into the topic. Before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you would hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Basically, come back here. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday, and I think you would also like it here. All right, belts. That started actually as a very practical object to keep your pants from falling down. <laughs> there was one purpose. Now there is two purposes, or it might be that the practicality has been pushed aside now that fashion has entered. So I think designer belts have been um, popular, more so popular for the past, I don't know, five plus years. I think it really came with uh, Gucci's GG logo belt, uh, which we're gonna, gonna, <laughs> gonna discuss a bit later. Um, and since then, more and more people actually saw the potential of a designer belt because they are quite less expensive than a bag, quite visible still, so you're able to kind of uh, show, show a bit um, of a, a designer flex in a way, um, and, and also have a functional piece to, to keep your pants up. Uh, just as a kind of first thought before we actually go into the different designer belts and what I think are absolutely worth it. I think you should consider first your own personal style before even considering buying a belt. Because we look at Instagram and different social media outlets where um, stylist people basically wear belts in very different ways um, with the normal, <laughs> with the belt buckles of your pants, but they might also be on your waist, etc. So please consider your personal style before actually choosing any type of belt, because if you don't ever wear a waist belt, you don't need to think about that purpose <laughs> when buying a belt. So. Just keep that in mind and don't be sucked into this world of styling. Because at least what I've learned is that something that looks good on someone else on Instagram, it does not necessarily do that for me. So I won't get the same effect that that person got with that belt. If, if you, you understand what I'm saying. Okay, let's start with the belts that actually are worth it. The ones that bring you and your wardrobe, your style, the most longevity are the ones with basically no big visible branding, aka noticeable logos. And um, when it comes to the thickness or the color of the belt, or, or these, what I'm gonna introduce to you right now, uh, you need to choose a color that works for you. So I, I think quite many suggest black, but if you don't wear that much black, or if you wear too much black and you actually want the belt to stand out, or, or anything, or if your wardrobe is filled with reds, then maybe a red would be a neutral color for you. So before you purchase anything, look at your style, look at your wardrobe, what fits into there. Hmm. Now, the first one that I think it is really worth it is the Salvatore Ferragamo belt. It's very unisex looking and uh, definitely, I mean, if you know, you know, it's Salvatore Ferragamo's logo that is on the belt buckle, but I think it is quite subtle, meaning that it is not so hyped, it's not oversaturated, um, people who are not that into this luxury designer stuff, they 
won't necessarily know that it is a Salvatore Ferragamo belt. They will think that it is a cool belt that actually fits to a casual event, but also if you really want to use it in a more formal place, because personally, I don't think that a logo that has like a massive branding <laughs> in the belt buckle that you would wear to, let's say, a formal event, it doesn't look that sophisticated. Um, so, so something to consider, but I definitely feel that this, this belt is gorgeous. Um, there are different colorways. They have this kind of reversible one, so you'd get two belts with the price of one. Uh, look also from the men's section, because as mentioned, unisex, unisex design. So, so that's definitely my first on the list. Second one is the Bottega Veneta belt. I think this kind of um, gold triangle that I have in the photo, it looks quite cool. And with the kind of line, uh, it continues the line of Bottega where there is no visible branding on your face logos. If you know, you know. And I think this, with all of its simplicity, it's, it's really gorgeous. And if you're also looking for a belt to wear on your waist as well as on your hips with your pants, I mean, I think this this really works because it is um, it's quite delicate looking, but it's still like if you choose the thickness, it's I think this is a winner. Third one, if you actually have a bit more of a budget for the belt, which by the way I don't really recommend to use this much money on a belt, unless you are absolutely certain <laughs> that you are in for this belt. But it is the Hermes Kelly belt. I think the buckle, uh, it's so beautiful. It's very elegant, ladylike. Um, I personally think this belt works better worn on the waist um, than not so with as a basic belt. But I think this is also like more of a subtle, Subtle hint, but does the same job as a belt. Very durable. And um, it doesn't have the same issue that most of these belts that has these regular um, holes that you kind of <laughs> close it with. Uh, those holes are gonna stretch out and be a bit disinformed later on because you use it with this Kelly belt. That's not an issue. So that's that's the third one that I do feel that is actually uh, worth investing if you really truly have the money to put on that Hermes belt. I have a second category of these subtle logos that are worth looking at. So if you are into the logo that you want that there is actually a recognizable logo uh, that people know, uh, I have two two choices or options for that as well. So the first one is the Saint Laurent monogram belt. Um, if I would have the money and if I would be a belt person um, to that extent, I think this is adorable. It's so cute. It has the YSL logo, but it is really small. So it won't jump on your face, but if you are more into the logos, then I think this is an excellent, choice to go with. And a second one is, once again, if you have a bit more of the money money, would be the Hermes H belt. So um, the same kind of story than with the Kelly belt. So I wouldn't really consider if, um, <laughs> if you're not willing to put that much money on a belt to go directly to Hermes. But I think that belt is truly a classic. And even though it has the H, so basically a logo on the buckle. <laughs> Am I eating my words already <laughs> at this point of the video? Um, so if you are into a more subtle logo look, Hermes H belt. Now, the belts that you should definitely stay away from. And those are the really trendy ones that uh, have big, big logos on it that will most definitely make you the trendiest person right now. But when that train has gone, you don't wanna wear that belt anymore because it doesn't do the effect for you anymore because it's not trendy. So 
you, you won't get the same elevation and hype to your own style because um, it's not trendy anymore. And when you try to sell a formerly trendy belt, you will lose a lot of money because the resale value of those, it's not good. And I have two examples from this category. And I think you have guessed the first one. So it is the Gucci GG or double G belt. And the only reason is with the double GGs, those came to the market with such a big, big bang. And I think that everyone had those belts, including myself. I made the mistake actually twice, if you can believe it or not. First, I purchased it from the men's line with a silver buckle because it was a bit less expensive than the women's belts. Don't know why, I'm not sure if that's the case anymore. This was some, some years ago, but basically <laughs> I bought it and I, I wore it for, let's say one season or something. And no, I felt, I felt kind of tacky. And I'm not saying that the belt makes you look tacky, but it made me feel very, very tacky. Um, and I think, I thought it was because of the size. <laughs> so that, that was my first initial thoughts. It's because of the size, I bought two big ones. So I ended up selling it. And because I got it from the men's line, and I think I even got some kind of discount to it, if I remember correctly, I was able to pretty much get my money back out of it. And it was in such a good condition that I, I was quite happy, happy to part with that. Uh, maybe six months later from that, I decided, yeah, it was the too big, too big uh, belt buckle. So I'll just purchase a smaller one. And this time with the gold buckle, because everyone had the gold one. And I first thought I don't want to be the same as everyone else. But then I didn't feel the silver one. So I just thought in my mind, I need the gold one. Go figure. Um, had that one, sold it for the same reason, because it just didn't fit. It just... Yeah, at that point I decided that I'm not gonna invest that many hundred euros on a designer belt. Until last year when Valentino came up with their new logo on a belt and I thought it looked very, very beautiful. And luckily I was able to get that also with some kind of a discount because I used it for two months and then I sold it. And I just made a decision with myself no more big massive logo belts like they are not for me but at the same time they are trendy and i was really lucky that i was able to sell them during the hype so i basically maybe lost some some tens of euros with that but i i would not go there so with with gucci especially you will get bored with that belt um maybe you have already gotten bored with it i don't know um, but I would not recommend purchasing that belt, at least not new from the boutique. Like if you're able to find it from the secondhand market and you really truly love it, then maybe go for it. But I, from the longevity point of view, like this is not the belt. And the second option that I have, and it kills me to say it because, oh my God, I love Christian Dior, but their belts, I think Dior, has currently been all over the place with their logos. So I would not purchase a Christian Dior belt because of, of the fact that their logo most likely is not gonna look like this in a couple of years time. And then you're gonna hit the same kind of feeling, most likely majority, not everyone, but if you have purchased something because it looks trendy, then most likely this is gonna happen to you. If you've purchased something uh, after the trend has kind of slowed down and you still love it, then that's a keeper. <laughs> Don't know why I didn't mention that earlier, but basically think about the reasons why you, you wanna have a trendy item. But the logos, I mean, they've changed it so many times during, let's say 10 years or so. And the elegance and elevation that a kind of beautiful Dior belt would do to you right now, you probably would not feel the same way after a couple of years when they once again changed their logo. And it might feel to you a bit outdated, 
And if you are into kind of styling, you probably don't want to feel like outdated. So that's just kind of my two cents on designer belts, which are actually worth it, which are not. I actually have a pro tip to the end. If you don't have your eyes set on a specific designer belt in a specific colorway, in a specific uh, logo, buckle, whatever, if it's not like a specific one, I would highly encourage you to, first of all, think about the longevity point of view. Would you actually wear something super flashy? Would maybe a more subtle be for an everyday use? Maybe. But wait for discount codes, wait for discount seasons. There are so many brands that then kind of have a sale on their belts and designer ones as well, but not maybe the most popular ones. So just kind of have patience or do what I did once I learned that these kind of big branded logo belts, I just, I feel very, very tacky and show off is wearing them. I purchased this, let's see, from a um, Gucci outlet in Germany, I think it was. And I paid 100 euros for this Gucci belt, which, yeah, I know it, it doesn't have like a very, very big um, belt buckle. It's very plain and the only kind of Gucci symbols are going with this Gucciissima, which, you know, it's from an outlet when it has the smaller um, uh, kind of embossing on it. But I mean, I, I paid 100 euros for a leather belt, which will not go out of style because it's so basic and plain. So also kind of in case you live close to some designer outlets um, or something like that, that's a good place to make these type of purchases that if you don't have your eyes set on one particular thing, then keep your options open and, and look what you can get for less. Because at the end of the day, if you are not the person who actually wears it on your waist and enjoy the fact that you have this kind of massive designer logo, the most popular and trendy one that everyone out there has and recognize that you have the same one, then please look on the other options as well. You don't need to have the same one that everyone else has. You need to have the belt that suits you. All right, that was it. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.